Brilliant. Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Really good to welcome you uh, this morning. If you're here in the building or you're at uh, home watching us online, especially if you're a visitor this morning, and we'll give you a real special welcome this morning. My name's Ian. I'm one of the pastors here. and just want to give you a really warm welcome uh, to church this morning. It's glad uh, you'll be able to join us. Did you know, church, that there's a God that loves you this morning? Amen. There's a God that's got your name graven on his hand. There's a God that knows all your needs before you even ask for it. There's a God that gives you a hope and a future uh, this morning. And there's a God that will never leave you and nor forsake you. I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus, our amazing risen Saviour. That's who we're talking about this morning. And we've come to worship this morning, to worship him this morning. So we're going to stand together and worship. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to worship uh, God together. Father, we want to thank you so much for the name of Jesus and what that means and what that stands for and what that holds, uh, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. You love us no matter what, (laughs) Father God. Thank you, Jesus, that my name, everybody's name is written on your hand, so you can't forget us, Jesus, so we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus, that you know all our needs before we even ask for it. Jesus, we thank you for that. And Jesus, we want to thank you so much because of you, we have a hope and a future. Thank you so much for that. So Jesus, we come this morning with all those things on our hearts, all those things in our minds, just want to... Let rip, Jesus, our worship to you this morning. We come with all the love that we want to show you this morning because you're this amazing, amazing God and we are so loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Sharon, thank you, team. Bless you, amen. Hello, good good morning, yeah, still morning. (laughs) If you want to rise and hello to those at home, feel free to praise along. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our song be a sign we are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven. Fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. To you our hearts are broken. Nothing here is hidden. You are one.
welcomed in the midst of us, God, and be welcomed in us, God, yeah. Be welcomed in this Oh 
Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sail the anchor in the way oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are the goodness of you. You've been a father. You've been a friend. Thank you, Father. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have 
something to us on the <clears throat> on the back of those words of God's goodness and God reminded me that when he passed before Moses he showed Moses all of his goodness all of his goodness and all of his goodness and I just felt that God wanted to say to us that I have made you in my image so that you can see my goodness. You can see and understand the kingdom of God and all of its goodness and how my kingdom is a kingdom that rules over every situation every decision that you make, every desire that you have, my kingdom rules. And I, just, and, and I just felt God say, in the midst of all of that, to remind us that we are made in his image. And God say to us, don't make me in your image. But there is a high calling for us. There is a high calling to step into everything that God rules and reigns into. To be partakers of his kingdom like never before. To take the risks that the kingdom of God offers us in these days. That where he rules, everything comes into order and so I just so just sense God saying yes I am good I am very good and you have been made in my image to be very very good
Your goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after me. Thank you, God. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendering now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Oh. oh, oh. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, thank you, Bernie, for your word. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Amen. Oh, thank you, team. Thank you. Thank you. Do have a seat. Today uh, is um, Father's Day um, today, and uh, so we just want to uh, honour that uh, this morning, but I also want to pray for all you guys, uh, whether you're a dad uh, or not, and uh, so I've just been praying for you all uh, this last week, and just ask God just to, to just give me a word uh, for you, uh, just to, to bless you uh, and to encourage you uh, this morning, and uh, it's it, it sparked from um, Ezekiel uh, 36, verse 26, which says this, I will give you a new heart and put in you a new spirit. I will give you a new heart and put you in a, and give you a new spirit. And what I felt God was saying uh, for you guys th this morning, and it, it comes in two parts. So I just first want to speak to those that are, that are dads and uh, that are, are granddads uh, 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 as well. And then I'll we'll speak ask for those that aren't uh, dads. Um. I just felt that God was, was saying that he's going to release a new spiritual divine, Christ-like father characteristics upon you today. Which will have a real... Oh, how you say it? A real deep influence on your children and your grandchildren. And this is the important part. It doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter if they're newborn, if they're in their early ages, teens, 20s, 25s, 30s, 40s, 50s. It's never too late to influence your children with the love of Christ. So perhaps for some of you dads or granddads, you think it's too late. It's not too late. So receive that uh, this morning, that you have influence, a divine, Christ-like, fatherly anointing that has come on you this morning to have influence on your children and your grandchildren. For those of those that aren't fathers, it's the same for you. You are going to receive this divine, Christ-like, um, heavenly father characteristics upon you that again will have massive influence upon you and upon people that you meet. So much so, you will be recognized for it. I believe God is saying to you that someone will say to you, Ian, do you remember that time that you prayed for me? Do you remember that email you sent me? Do you remember that um, text you sent me? That completely had so much massive influence on me, it changed my life. So, so for those of you, as I say, that aren't fathers, you are also going to receive this anointed upon you and you will get recognized for this influence that you're going to have upon whoever you come across. Amen? So guys, we receive that uh, this morning. Please, I, I pray in Jesus' name. And I've asked Sharon if she would just come and just pray that uh, over you uh, this morning. Thank you, Sharon.
Father God, we just thank you that you are the good, good Father. Yep. We just thank you that you have set such a great example for our men, Lord. And yep. we just pray that you would empower them to just take on that role as father and to be good fathers yep. for all of our men because they all have that mandate to be father figures to the people around them. Yeah. So yeah, we just thank you for that equipping, Lord. We thank you for just filling them with your spirit. Give them wisdom, Lord. Wisdom like you gave Solomon yeah. as they go about this role, Father. Give them the strength as their days are so shall their strength be, Lord. Yeah. And help them to always remember to just look to you, to look to you as the good Father. Yeah. And follow after you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sharon. Bless you. Thank you. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you. Good stuff. Fantastic. I think I did this, but welcome. <laughs> it's really good to see you all. So thank you so much for being here. And thank you for those that you're online uh, as well. Just before Neil comes to speak, just want to um, remind you of a few things, some amazing, exciting things that have been uh, for us uh, as a church. Um, Hopefully you should get Neil's, um, it's a Sunday email uh, each Sunday. If you do not, please let us know, because uh, we'd love to add you to the list. But if not, we have some copies here uh, this morning, and perhaps we're trying to do this every week, uh, for you to take home with you to have a read uh, and a pray over, over your, your lunch or wh wh whatever you're doing uh, next week. And Because uh, there's some good stuff happening uh, for us uh, as a church. And uh, one of the things is, is called Spirit Cafe, which happened on Friday, which is led by Karen. Karen, Karen, just share with us what that's all about. It'd be great. Thank you is an outreach event that is happening this Friday. It'll be happening every month. Um, hopefully at some point it'll be happening on a weekly basis. Um, Spirit Cafe is designed to reach out to people in the name of Jesus, introducing people to Jesus, um, encountering the power of the Holy Spirit and encountering the love of the Father. And so many people out there don't know that the Holy Spirit is the only safe spirit mm. and he's the spirit of goodness. He's the spirit of truth and he's the spirit of life. So we're using terms which um, the, the world would understand, but perhaps m might sound a bit strange to the kingdom of God, like treatments. Um, we had one of the team this week, we had a pilot last week, and uh, one of the team had a peace treatment and was so filled with the Holy Spirit that for two days she was slurring her words because she was <laughs> drunk in the spirit. So we're really, really hoping that this will be, well, so we know that this will be a tool to introduce people to Jesus across Colchester. Um, value your prayers so much for that. So that's this Friday from 7 o'clock until 9, or the, the cafe itself, 7.30 till 9 o'clock. would so value your, your prayers. And if you want to be a part of that, um, my email address is karen at kingsland.org.uk. And just finally, I've been trying to get my neighbour, ask my neighbour to come to Alpha for over two years, and she's refused. And I said to her, would you, would you like to come and have a treatment at Spirit Cafe? I said, yes, please, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, yeah, please pray for us, because this is a, a work for the kingdom, uh, validated by the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Karen. Brilliant. Thank you. Superb. Uh, next Sunday, the 27th um, of, of June at 3.30, we have Messy Church. A Messy Church is just brilliant. It's run by Bex and Sean and the rest of the team. And uh, just a great opportunity to come and for folks just to come in a very friendly environment. You know, there's a little message, uh, some worship, and some, some fun time. That's at 3.30. And I think there's still some spaces left, uh, but you do need to um, uh, check on the online, please, and, and get your tickets. That'd be uh, fantastic. Um, we've got some other things happening again. Uh, we're trying to organize some baptismal services uh, as well. And uh, so if, if that's you, if you think actually this is it's a time for me to ba be baptized, let me myself know or Neil know. I've got two people already that want to be baptized, which is fantastic. And uh, so we'll let you know more near to the time that we get some dates. Uh, but if you feel like you want to get baptized, then please uh, do let us know. And on the 15th of uh, August, we're going to have um, a, a joint dedication service. What that means, we had quite a few newborns uh, over uh, lockdown, and we haven't had a chance to celebrate that and get excited about that. So we're going to have a joint celebration, and hopefully by then uh, the restrictions will be over a bit, and we can have a, a real good time of worship together and celebration together. Then afterwards, we're going to the, the park just down the road, uh, with a great big open space, and we have a barbecue together uh, and just spend some together as, as a church family. And uh, so we'd love you to, to put that uh, in your 
your diaries. Um, I'll let Neil speak about the leaflets on, on, your, on, your, on your chairs, about summer groups, uh, in a minute. But I uh, just want to uh, put those ideas and thoughts uh, in, into your head. Um, let's just pray, and then I'll ask Neil to come and uh, uh, bring God's word. Father, I just want to, uh, just want to seal that, that word and that, that prayer that Sharon uh, brought for us uh, regarding uh, the guys here this morning, Jesus. That, Father, they will just receive that uh, today. That they, you will just fill them with that amazing characteristics, characteristics of you, this, this new divine, holy, fatherly characteristics, Lord, I pray, Jesus. And, Father, I pray, Lord, that they will just be surprised by the influence they're going to have uh, Father God, on their children and their grandchildren and, and people that they get, they're going to meet. Lord, I pray as you pour in this anointing upon them, Lord, I pray, Jesus. Father, we do want to pray for Friday and, and the Spirit Cafe, Cafe with Karen and her team. Lord, I pray for, again, your surprises even more, Father God, with people that are going to turn up. Uh, Father, that will just encounter you, uh, Jesus, through that powerful, wonderful Holy Spirit, we pray, uh, Father God. Yeah, Jesus, don't hold back on Friday. Do some amazing things, we pray, Jesus, we ask. Father, I just want to pray for Neil now too, Lord. Thank you for him, uh, Jesus. And I pray a real blessing upon him now, uh, Father God, as he comes and brings your word. Thank you so much for him. Thank you for the way that he communicates your word so well, uh, Father God, to us, Jesus. And Lord, we just give you permission again just to speak through him in a real powerful, almighty way, we pray. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Yeah, the summer group. So excited about this because um, I've been... Uh, until last summer, when everything changed, uh, we used to try and encourage the small groups to take a break for August for the, the school summer holidays uh, to give the leaders a bit of a rest and to sort of re relaunch them, in a sense, in September. And it gave us the opportunity to do some interesting things in the summer. And so we've... Re revisited that this year and so in this leaflet which should have been on your uh, on your chair or on the email that you got this morning um, we have I think a dozen different groups that you can be part of over the summer and I would just encourage you to pick one and get involved uh, there's a couple that are around prayer. There's one around getting into the Old Testament. I, I don't know how many of you know the message of the book of Amos or the book of Ecclesiastes, and that's just a bit daunting. Well, Hazel's doing some great sessions uh, on, on those two Old Testament books. Um, we came across this Parenting for Faith program, and we thought we'd, uh, we may well run that out across the church, but we thought we'd start with toddlers. So we've got three groups um, for parents of toddlers. So we've got mums, we've got dads, and we've got uh, carers and grandparents and anyone else, mums and dads who couldn't make the other ones, uh, for the Parenting for Faith. Um, seven... Um, unfortunately for the rest of the family he was born with a brain and uh, so he's going to do some stuff on um, one on physics one on philosophy and one on psychology um, uh, yeah fourth 18th so big ideas we're calling it uh, just good news honey are we rich yet is for people who are um, either entrepreneurs or or married or, or um, their partner is an entrepreneur and just the stress that that can can bring to relationships and and we just thought that's such an interesting subject and Balaji and Samuel uh, Balaji is just such an entrepreneurial woman and uh, Samuel is uh, married to her <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> so that's just they, they do a podcast called um, honey I believe they do a podcast honey are we rich yet or if they don't then they will and uh, they're gonna do some stuff here um, Gemma's um, does some self-worth and self-esteem stuff with, with girls in secondary schools, but she's increasingly feeling that this is a message for all women, and particularly women with um, daughters. Uh, so if that's you, then, um, yeah, have a look at that one. So there, there's just a lot of... There's a few I haven't mentioned as well, but anyway, they're all in there. Uh, please have a look. Please stretch yourself. Do something different. Uh, whether that's stretching your mind with some of the stuff Seven's doing, stretching spirituality with Gail's group, or, or, or just plunging into something different uh, that you've not thought about before. Um, oh, there's a grandparenting one. Uh, creative response with Don. All sorts of stuff. Um, please close this leaflet now and listen to the rest of my sermon. Uh, but I'm just very excited about that. Please sign up. Some of them are very limited in number. 
um, just tiny groups because of the uh, what they're doing and where they're meeting and all of that. So um, uh, sign up early uh, in order to get a, a, a place on those uh, one of those courses. So good, so good. Um, I've just realised I've left this over here. So when I was uh, younger, when I was younger, so much younger than today, I went to a little village church, and uh, in this little village church, could someone flick my PowerPoint on, please, at the beginning? Thank you so much. Um, I went to this little village church, and all the sermons, almost without fail, finished with one or more of the following application points. Pray more. Read the Bible more. Be part of a church. Tell people about Jesus. And, and that was it. And uh, so I determined um, to go on a lifelong quest as I preach, not to make the point of my sermons, pray more, read the Bible more, go to church, tell people about Jesus. And overall, I think that's worked. If you've listened to me over the last few years, uh, I hope that my sermons have been a little more interesting than that. If not, I'm sorry, but I've found them more interesting than that, and uh, that's kept me going. So that's really helped. So I've managed to get to the third in this mini-series on keeping your spiritual fervor, where we're looking at a couple of verses, one from Psalm 51, which is where we pray to God uh, that Restore to me, this is uh, Psalm 51 verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant a willing spirit, a yes spirit, an enthusiastic spirit, a positive spirit. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So we're asking God to stir up a spiritual fervor in us. And then in Romans chapter 12, uh, it says, uh, never, verse 11, never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. So in the psalm, we're asking God to stir it up in us. In Romans, we're stirring it up in ourselves, keeping our spiritual fervor. And I've managed to get to number three in this series without saying, pray more, read the Bible more, go to church, and tell people about Jesus. But I can't get much further in the series without doing some of that. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, I don't apologize for leaving it till now because I really believe that Jesus was much more interested in us loving God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength and all of our mind than he was about how many minutes we spent each day praying. I really believe that, that God is much more concerned about how we make Jesus Lord in our workplace, in our families, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in, the, in our hobbies and in all of our life than he is about how much we read the Bible every day. But the reality is that if we're going to keep our spiritual fervor, then we need to recognize that this pandemic has changed the way that many of us pray. The way that many of us read the Bible. It's changed the sort of people we're talking to about Jesus. And it's certainly changed the way that we do church. So I thought it would be really good for us to think about these things as we come out of this pandemic and out of these regulations and into this next season, whatever that looks like, uh, for us to be thinking about some of these things as we pray for God to stir up a spiritual fervor in us and we decide to stir up a spiritual fervor in ourselves. So I want to talk about some of these things today. Many of us, as I said, have changed the way we pray during lockdown. And that's no bad thing, to change the way we pray. Quite a lot of us have experimented with, with praying in tongues in a group on Zoom every morning at 8.15. You're very welcome to join that. It happens in our Zoom room. And uh, half an hour to pray. And some of us have never done that before. Some of us have been calling on God for mercy in this thing, in a way that we've never prayed for mercy before. Some of us have, have found that our prayer concerns have widened and we've found ourselves praying for different nations as they've come up in the, in the news and we've followed this thing around the world and, and our prayer vision has got bigger. Others of us have found that our prayer vision has got smaller, that it's shrunk, that we find ourselves just praying much more for our neighbours and our family because they're the only people that we're seeing. Some of us have uh, found that the, the quiet of the lockdown 
has encouraged us to be more contemplative in prayer, to develop more rhythms of silent prayer. Some of us have learned how to walk with Jesus in the cool of the day, as we've used some exercise time to go for a walk in the woods or to just to connect with Christ as we do that. Some of us have become much more strident in our praying. And there's an anger and a frustration that somehow has, for some of us, has sort of translated into, into praying some of those angry prayers, using some of those scriptures from Habakkuk. How long, O oh Lord? And some of us have, have just become more verbal as we've prayed those psalms angry psalms some of us have found that our faith has been rocked and we've realized that it wasn't really faith at all but it was a bit more presumption and we've become a little less certain in our prayers and some of us have have just sought to remain faithful regardless of what's going on and we remember the long love of God we remember the faithfulness of God we're talking about and praying and imagining the three mile an hour God who walks with us slowly through the mundane things of life and as we've sought to be faithful in prayer sometimes it's felt boring but it's felt true to our situation and what is happening currently and I just want to bring a word of encouragement if any of those things resonated with you. I just want to bring a word of encouragement to you this morning and say, it's okay. Well done. If your prayer language has changed, if the way that you pray has adapted, if, if things are slightly different now in your prayer life than they were before the pandemic, that's fine. That's really good. It's all right. And your prayer language will be different to mine. The way you pray will be different to the way that your partner prays or your, your, your friends in your house group pray. And it's so good over this last year to have heard so many different voices in our morning services and, and the way that they pray. Different styles, different emphases have come through, haven't they? Different burdens, different volume. Some are quite repetitive, some are written down. Some are very passionate, some are quite punchy. Some of the, the recordings we've had have been quite earthy and some have been quite eloquent. And all of that is good. All of that is good. And as we renew our spiritual fervor and as we ask God to renew our spiritual fervor, we, we, we need a rhythm of prayer, a pattern of prayer, a lifestyle of prayer that reflects where we're at now, that reflects what's happening in society that reflects our current stage of life which might have changed over the last year or two a, a way of praying that reflects our personality and and new reality and, and I just want to encourage you to think about this as you stir up a spiritual fervor to think about what that looks like in prayer for you how can I stir up my prayer life how can I reflect my spiritual fervor in the way that I pray and as I challenge you to think about some of those things, those are just a few things that, that I found helpful and maybe you will too. Uh, and one is to pray out loud. For me, that was a game changer. For me, that was huge. Pray the Lord's Prayer. Jesus told us, didn't he? He taught us to pray. Pray like this. And whether you use that as something to repeat or whether you use that as a model for prayer, pray the Lord's Prayer. Try something new in prayer. Join in Gail's group in the summer or Marcus's book group where he's reading, uh, where they're reading the uh, Pete Gregg book, How to Pray. Try something new and establish a rhythm. A rhythm of prayer that helps you get a specific focus on praying for a particular time. This is what I'm giving myself to for the next X minutes. This is what I'm going to do. I'm focusing on the Lord. I'm focusing on prayer. But a rhythm that includes that at certain times of the day, but it also includes a general awareness of the presence of God with me throughout the day. 
A rhythm of prayer that has a specific focus time and a general awareness. I don't think I want to give you any more than that, but I really encourage you to do some work on this, to make it happen, to stir up a spiritual fervor. Many of us, many of us have read the Bible differently this last year. Some of us have searched the scriptures to, to see what it says about the current situation and it's led us to reading the scriptures in a different way. Some of us have decided with the extra time to adopt a Bible reading plan. Some of us are using an app that helps us to guide our reading and all of that is so good, so, so good. The scriptures are such a gift to us, aren't they? They, they were never, oops, it's gone. Uh, Go what? A code, a code, a parent. A parent wants something. Uh, the kids want the parents. If you're a parent here, we're really glad that your kids are in. They're perfectly safe. Everything's fine. Uh, no one's come to any harm at all. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, about the Bible. Um, <laughs> it's such a gift to us. The Bible was never meant as, uh, never intended originally, was it? Uh, to, to be read on my own in my room uh, at home. I mean, that, that just was never part of Paul's intention when he wrote the thing. Uh, that was never what Luke expected when he wrote it down. That was never what the, the, the writers of the Old Testament thought would happen. But it's such a privilege, such an honor to have our own Bible in our own language, in a, in a way that, that we can understand. Uh, our own Bible that... Um, that we can read. And every time we take those scriptures and allow Jesus to speak to us through them, we honor the, the people who paid such a great price to make the Bible available to us. Every time we allow God to speak to us through the personal reading of scripture, we honor those martyrs. We honor those saints who kept the scriptures. We, we honor the people who, who paid such a price to keep them for us. And we honor the original writers. People like Luke and Paul and, and others who, who made it possible. <laughs> who wrote the stuff down for us. Wrote the stories, wrote the letters, wrote the history. And of course we honor the Lord who breathed into the minds and the spirit of those writers. As they put pen to paper, and it wasn't, as they wrote down what God was inspiring them to write. And as we renew our spiritual fervor, we need a rhythm of interaction with the scripture, a way of reading and reflecting, a way that, that of reading that leads to us changing the way we think and changing the way we live, that, that changes into spirit-inspired action. And here's a few things that might help. I would say read it short and read it long. Read chunks of it. Read chapters of it. Read a book at a time. Read it long, but read it short. Find a, find a verse or, or two verses that you can think about, meditate on, and, and make work for you. Read it short and read it long. Think about it. Uh, there is research about how people grow as Christians. What helps people develop into mature believers? And, and one of the things, one of the key things at every stage of the Christian life is that we not read the Bible, but think about it. That we think about it. That we reflect on it. And that, that might mean memorizing a, a, a verse. It might mean meditating on a passage. It might be underlining bits that, that are significant or important. It might mean journaling. It might mean reflecting in prayer. It might almost anything to interact, to think about what the scriptures are saying to you. And that can have a huge impact on our spiritual growth. And have a plan. Have a plan. So that we're not just going back to our favorite verses. We're not just opening the Bible and dipping in. But, but we're trying to get the bigger picture. So have a plan to read 
the Gospels or read the New Testament or read the whole Bible or whatever it is. Have a plan that enables you to get the bigger picture rather than just to return to a few favorite passages or a lucky dip. Again, I could talk about this a lot more, but, but I would just encourage you to work out a way of reading Scripture in this next season that, that builds you up, that establishes you in your faith, that allows the Lord to speak to you, that causes you to stand and to grow and to prosper. Church. Obviously, the way we've done church over this last year has changed. The challenge of getting online, the challenge of coming back to a building, the lack of opportunities to interact, the, the importance of small groups, the frustration of Zoom, the not being allowed to sing. So many of us have missed church so much, and others of us have so valued the time that we've spent at home or at the park or at the beach or whatever. But we know that Christianity is a team sport, don't we? We know that we need each other. We know that the commands to love one another and bear one another's burdens, not to give up meeting together, mean that we need to find ways of being together. We, we know that we're here as family, that, that we're here as community, that we're here as a building in which God lives by his Spirit. We know that we're displaying the wisdom of God as we, as we meet together and we're displaying that wisdom to the principalities and powers who cannot understand how these people can love one another in the way that they do. How these people get along with each other even though they're so different from each other and the only thing they have in common is Jesus. And we, we need the, the encouragement and support of, of older brothers and sisters. And we need the enthusiasm and vitality of the children. And we need to be meeting strangers. We need to be finding people who are different to us. We need the fellowship of the saints. We need the opportunity to serve. We, we need to be able to minister and bless others and allow them to minister to us and bless us. We need the encouragement of being together. We need to be part of what God is doing through us as a group as well as in us as individuals. We need the blessing of giving and receiving prayer ministry. And as we renew our spiritual fervor, I would just encourage you to find a way of connecting well with church. Of, of being part of the beloved bride of Christ. The, the bride that Jesus died for. We, we need a way of working that out that works for us as an individual and works for us as a body, as community. We need a way of growing in fellowship of deepening our ministry, of growing together. And as a leadership, we're committed to doing all that we can within the law to, to facilitate worship and ministry and fellowship. But as we've said several times, we will wait for you. Here's a few things that might help. I think we need a small group and we need a crowd. In the small group, we ask questions, we learn together, we pray together, we can prophesy over each other. We can support each other. We can work out how to make good decisions together. But in a big group, we get inspired. We meet people that we would never otherwise come across. We, we find people who are different to us, and we get to include and to welcome and become part of the bigger picture. We get to hear about what we're doing together. We need a commitment and a desire. We need a commitment to say, I'm going to be there. If it's Tuesday night at 8, that's what I'm doing. If it's Sunday morning, that's where I'll be. We need a commitment, but we also need a desire. We need God to put in us a hunger and a desire to be with other believers and to learn and grow together, to receive from each other. A, a desire that's um, recognizing that we're making a difference in each other's lives and in the life of the community when we're meeting together and part of this thing that we call church. And it's a social thing and a spiritual thing. The church is primarily a spiritual body, isn't it? A, a representation of Christ on earth. Together we image Jesus. Together we are the body of Christ. But we're also a community, a social group of people who are following Jesus as Lord. People from every tribe and nation and language. People of all ages. People of all backgrounds. People of all educational standards. People... We're just different from each other, loving Jesus and working out what that means to be together. 
There's loads more I can say, but please work out a way of developing and encouraging and stirring up your spiritual fervor together with, with other believers in a way that's open and inclusive and stretching and helpful to where you are and a way for you to be helpful to others in the church. Telling others. Telling others. Tell people about Jesus. Many of us have found our circles changing in the last year, haven't we? Some of us have talked and even prayed with neighbours that we hardly knew existed a year and a half ago. Some of us who saw our workplace as our mission now find that we're not allowed to go there. Some of us have found that the light of Christ has shone through us more brightly because somehow we're coping. Somehow we're still here. Somehow we're able to withstand the pressure. Some of us have found more opportunity to have serious conversations with a variety of people because they seem to be just a little bit more open. Just a little bit more serious. Some of us are connected on Facebook or other social media with, with folk and we've tried to allow Jesus to, to seep through our posts and to seep through our conversations online and we're, we're just able to tell people a little bit about Jesus in that way. Many of us have been influenced by Karen's excellent book on giving love away. And it's helped us to see the person in front of us as, as someone who's loved by the Lord and open to the possibility of an encounter with Jesus. Many of us have taken opportunities to invite people to online church because it's easier. Or to a Kintsugi Hope cause. Or to a barbecue with a few Christian friends. Or to come to Alpha. And as we renew our spiritual fervor and ask God to do that in us, we need to be open to the opportunities this season brings with all its different conversations, with its different levels of openness, and with the, the different needs that there are. We know that there are so many who are hurting, so many who are needy, so many who are fearful, so many who are confused. Many people need reassurance and confidence and hope. And we know that we can bring that to people. And we know that there are so many opportunities to bring Jesus into conversations, to bring Jesus into situations, to carry Christ with us. And here's a few things that might help. Don't fear. And don't apologize for when you don't know. Don't, don't fear to bring Jesus into the conversation. Don't be afraid of quoting scripture and, say, and not saying it's scripture just a wise thing. Don't, don't fear about talking about your prayers. Don't, don't fear to talk about what God has done in your life. And don't apologize for your lack of answers. The chances are that you've thought about it much more than anyone who you're talking to. The chances are that you know this stuff about God. Don't be afraid to say what you, you believe, but don't worry when you don't have all the answers. I'll tell you a secret. No one does. Love. Love is always attractive. If you can smile, if you can care, if you can genuinely be interested, if you can speak in a way that doesn't put down or condemn, if you can speak in a way that doesn't criticize or belittle, you'll find that the grace that you carry finds a way for the grace of Jesus to come through. And we want people, don't we? We want people to be part of this discipleship journey. The, the, Jesus said, didn't he, make disciples. And a disciple is someone who loves God with all of their heart, all of their soul, all of their strength and all of their mind. And so if we're helping people love Jesus a bit more with their heart because they're, they're finding that, that there's a draw and attraction in the love that we're showing, then, then they're beginning to love God with all of their heart. If we, if we can say something that raises some questions and, and pro pro provokes a few questions, then, then we're helping people to love God with all of their mind. If we're, we're able to, to create a spiritual hunger... If, if somehow we're encouraging them to pray and offering to pray for them, then we're encouraging them to love God with all of their soul. We're beginning to make disciples, even if we might not think that they even know who Jesus is. If you're encouraging them to do something that draws them closer to the Father, you're making disciples bring people along. 
And obviously there's much more that we could say in this area, but please get yourself into a place spiritually where you're aware that you're somehow shining the light of Christ into the world that he has you right now and in this next season. Spiritual fervor is like a spiral staircase. It's like a spiral staircase where you keep coming back to the same point, but you're either going up or you're coming down. In this new season, we need a new spirituality, a new way of talking to God, a new way of allowing God to speak to us, a new way of being church. And many of us will find new environments where we can learn how to represent Jesus well in that new situation. We can go up this spiritual spiral staircase. I'm talking to someone briefly after I said some of these things, all of these things at the first service. And they said it felt like going to the physio this week. Uh, two of my daughters are physios, and the um, frustration that they have is when people come back and they tell them, I'm no better. And my daughter says, have you been doing the exercises? If you Google spiritual fervor, you'll get a sermon or an article that says, pray more, read the Bible more, be in church, tell people about Jesus. My teenage church preachers were not all wrong. <laughs> we can do this. I don't want to be condemning because that was the effect really of my uh, teenage experience. But I do want to say, uh, let's ask the Lord to stir up in us a spiritual fervor. Let's stir up in ourselves a spiritual fervor. Can we stand together? I'm going to ask Bethan and Sharon if they'll come and, uh, and, and lead us in the last song. I'm going to pray, and uh, then Ian's going to close our service. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you pull us into relationship with yourself that looks like prayer in all sorts of different forms. I thank you that you speak to us through the scriptures in all sorts of different ways. I thank you, Lord God, that you have given us the gift of the church to encourage and help and build each other up. I thank you, Lord God, that you have given us a message that changes the world. I thank you, Lord God, that as we pray, as we read scripture, as we're part of a church, as we tell others that, that somehow there's a spiritual fervor and energy and life in us that gets stirred up. And I pray, Lord God, that by your spirit now you would stir that up in us. And I bless everyone who's tried something different over lockdown, who, who's prayed in a different way, who's read the scriptures in a different way, who's tried to connect with other believers, who's carried something of your message to neighbors or colleagues or friends in a, in a new way. Lord, I bless Bless those initiatives and ask, Lord God, that you would stir that up, that you would pour your grace onto those things, that there would be success in those areas. We pray, Lord God, that, that you would give us God ideas and, and good ideas on how to, to work out a spirituality that works for this next season. Lord, won't you fill us with your Holy Spirit and grant us a commitment desire and a commitment to love you with all of our soul as we pray and as we read as we learn together and as we carry the good news of jesus we pray it in your wonderful name for your glory for your sake in the name of jesus amen amen i'm sure ian will be very welcome There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves 
where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flow.
praying with you. If, if God's spoken to you this morning, we'll have just to send you away with uh, a, a prayer this morning. And uh, thank you for being here this morning. And uh, thank you to the band. Uh, thank you to the ones that looked after the children. And uh, thank you to the tech team. Bless you for keeping us going again. And if you're here tonight, uh, Natalie's speaking tonight. And Natalie's another great communicator of God's word. And uh, I'm speaking on resilience uh, at half past six. So you're welcome to come and join us uh, for that. So, but bless you. Uh, enjoy your rest of your day. Dan, so make sure you get spoiled today. And uh, enjoy your rest of your day with your families. And we'll see you again next week. Bless you. Bye-bye now. Thank you, Ben.